Good afternoon, soccer fans. Welcome to Gordcast, live streaming from the King George to Fifth Field in St. John's, where we have the 2018 Johnson Insurance Challenge Cup Trophy. Alongside of me is a uh, color guy, is uh, Rick Pearl, the latest builder to be inducted into the Bureau Peninsula Soccer Hall of Fame. And first of all, welcome, Rick. Thank you, Gord, and yes, a beautiful afternoon here in St. John's, the capital city of Newfoundland and Labrador, on what should be a great, fantastic Final Four weekend of Challenge Cup Soccer. Also in the broadcast booth here today, we have Mr. Ian Chater. For anyone that are traveling along, providing you stop on the long side of the highway, you can follow this uh, Newfoundland tournament, uh, Challenge Cup uh, tournament, via Twitter, and your handle for... Uh, for Twitter is Ian at Soccer NLSA at Soccer NLSA NLSA at Soccer NLSA and the man behind the screen is none other than Ian Chater. So Chater, welcome to uh, the uh, I guess uh, probably the premier uh, tournament in the uh, in Newfoundland and certainly senior men's uh, Ian. So again, welcome on board. Good to be on board, and it should be a great evening, a great afternoon, a great evening of soccer, no doubt about it. Okay, uh, lining up on the field uh, to our left. Uh, we have the blue, the double blue, the first place and the first time in the history of the Bobby Breen Memorial. We have the Felians from St. John's. Then to my right, we have the gold and red, three time, uh, three out of the last four, uh, I guess, uh, years they were ch uh, champions, 2017 champions. First of all, I, I like for I'd like for Rick to give the starting lineup. Rick? Okay, Gord, yes, the starting lineups for today's match for the Fillions. We have Braden Shepard in goal. On the back line for the Fillions, we have uh, Simon Polk, Bobby Gamba, Greg Reed, and Tyler Windsor. In midfield for the Fillions this afternoon, Toure Lamone, Taylor Smith, Philly Alanda, and up front for the Fillions, Emmanuel Dolo, Aaron Buckingham, and Carter McKay. Now back to live action. Okay, here, right from the opening whistle, we have uh, Felians looking to be go on the attack, where we have number seven, Emmanuel Dolo, tied for second in the goal scoring uh, race this season. Him and Tyler Kirby with 12 goals. The ball is taken by Emmanuel Dolo and being tackled by Famba from Holy Cross, number 17. Here we have number 11, uh, right wing back for uh, Felians, Simon Pope. Pushing the ball inside to, uh, oh no, it was intercepted. Here we have Jake Warren, number two for the Fedians. Outside, right to Jeff Slaney. Slaney up to Harry Carter. Carter on the inside to Tyler Kirby. And Kirby just inside with a great defensive play by the captain of the uh, Fedians, Greg Reed. Fans pouring into the uh, stadium or to the park here today, uh, Rick. Yes, well, we have the first uh, set play of the match here on the uh, minute and 20 seconds in. We have a corner kick for the Lions. We have a corner kick and uh, players moving in deep and the ball is cleared by the uh, Felian uh, defender. Here we have Carter Beckett pushing the ball through and a nice play by Freddy taking any offensive threat away by Emmanuel Dolo. Again, you are tuning in to Gordcast live streaming from King George to Fifth Park in St. John's where we have the first place Felians taking on the second place Holy Cross Crusaders. The ball is thrown in by Pope to attempting to go to Emmanuel Dolo and it goes off a of Dolo's body over the touchline and here we have a throw in going to Holy Cross. Sean Henderson. Henderson to uh, Isaac Bonasile. Bonasile back to Pretty. Pretty back to Thomas Pierway. Thomas Pierway going with a long ball attempting to go right down past center and it goes over the touchline. With just a little over two minutes of action gone by, and we have no scorer here at King George to Pitt Park. 
chance now to let the listeners and viewers back home at the Holy Cross lineup. Thomas Pierway and goal on the back line for Holy Cross. Jeff Slaney, Andrew Stanford, Alex Pretty, and Sean Henderson in midfield. Ole McLeese, Isaac Bonasteel, and Harry Carter. And up front for Holy Cross today, Jake Warren, Tyler Kirby, and Famba Fubola. Here we have uh, a corner kick coming up for uh, Fillions, and it looks like to be Philly taking the corner. Philly Orlando. Philly puts the ball deep inside of, right inside of the 18 beer box, but is cleared by Holy Cross. Here we have Simon Pope moving up, right, uh, right uh, attacking. Strongly inside of Aaron Buckingham. And the ball is cleared nicely by Jeff Sleeney. Ball is taken by Tyler Windsor. And Windsor and uh, Jeff Sleeney clash in midfield. And the ball goes off of Tyler Windsor with a throw in coming to Holy Cross Jeff Sleeney. Here we have uh, Greg Reed moving in. Ball taken by uh, Isaac Bonestill. He had a sort of a breakout season. Bonestill has had for Holy Cross this season. Here we have Pierway putting the ball to Henderson. The ball taken and put in Holy Cross territory where it's taken nicely by Ellie Pretty to Bonestill. Here we have her Harry Carter putting the ball through to Tyler Kirby. Kirby, one step from you. Kirby lets the ball go. It looked to go off a Felian defender with a corner kick. And now, uh, Rick, do you have the officials? Rick? Yes, I think so. I'm reading my mind, Gord. Uh, referee in charge today, David Pittman, the assistant referees, Matthew Horn and Gord Farrell, and the fourth official, Shannon Pope. David Pittman in the middle here today. Uh, head referee and uh, out of the four officials. Here today we have uh, David Pittman. Here we have uh, Holy Cross lining up for the corner. It looks to be number 10, Tyler Kirby. There is a nice wind. The winds are gusting maybe in proximity of 30, 35 kilometers. It's maybe, yeah, maybe to Holy Cross it's advantage. It's more of a diagonal win, but is, if it's in favor of either of the two clubs, it would be sort of in the pack of Thomas Pierway, who is right in front of the stands as you enter the King George the Fifth Park here in St. John's. Here we have Fumba with a nice ball, attempting to go to Tyler Kirby, and it's cleared by Tyler Windsor. Back to Tyler Kirby. And an attempt to go to Jeff Sleeney with the ball inside and is cleared by Felians. Here we have Greg Reed. Loman clearing the ball, tackling the ball and again is taken by Holy Cross. A lot of turnovers, a lot of nerves shown in the early goings off the game here. Turnovers in midfield. This time we have Holy Cross player here. Uh, we had... Uh, 17, Fumba Fubula taken down. And we had the ball. It has been taken with a. What do we got? Uh, free kick. Free kick. Direct. I was looking for the arm of the official. It appears to be down. The ball is put right inside here. And it cleared again by. Uh, by Holy. Or by the Felians. Here we have Sean Henderson putting the ball in. Attempting to pick up the ball in center field was. Andrew Stanford, center back for uh, Holy Cross, who was in on the corner kick. What do you think, Rick, in the early going? Seven minutes in, uh, and uh, Holy Cross has had uh, certainly the, the majority of the play. They've had uh, at least three shots directed on goal and uh, two corner kicks. So, uh, uh, Philly's defense back line, who lead, led a uh, only led 15 goals this summer, uh, really uh, showing the work and uh, having a lot of pressure exerted on them by the Holy Cross uh, forwards. Yeah, we have fans that are joining in here. I'll concentrate on the play-by-play. -play. like to say hello to, to the mayor of uh, Harper Grace, Don Coombs, and to Leo Goss from the Telegraph. Here again we have uh, Emmanuel Dolo pushing the ball, attempting. He looks to be man with uh, Shane Henderson, but the ball put through Philly and uh, cleared there by uh, 
a defender for Holy Cross. On the season, uh, Gord, uh, these teams played each other four times in the regular season. Fillions uh, won three games to one, uh, three times by one goal, while Holy Cross defeated uh, Fillions by a three goal margin in another contest. There we have Fillions with a corner kick, placing the ball, and it's off the head of uh, Alec Pretty. Again, it's been cleared by uh, Holy Cross where we have Taylor Spitt attempting in one with a one touch and it goes outside to uh, Lomans. Both teams, both teams in the early going here as we approach the uh, 10 minute mark. We have over eight minutes gone. Both teams I just uh, kind of feel getting a feel for the ball. Again, we have uh, Tyler Windsor up to Harry Carter, and Harry Carter with a nice ball attempting to go to Aaron Buckingham, but it was a great defensive play by number three. Definitely one of the better center backs in the province. Here we from Philly going to Philly scoring! Philly scoring! With a lovely goal here at the nine minute mark. What a goal, but it was a, a play here by the Philian pushing the ball back. And we have Holy Cross scoring the first goal off the uh, Johnson Insurance Challenge Trophy here. And it was a turnover. A, a give a player, a Philian player, give a Philly a, a clear cut breakaway. And he made no mistake. What do you think, Rick? Brilliant finish by Fabo Fubula as he just tapped the ball past Alexander Shepard. Uh, he used standing speed to get open. And nine minutes in, Holy Cross draws first blood here in the Johnson Shorts Challenge Cup Final Four weekend. Here we have Holy Cross again taking the ball and is back to Philly where we have a whistle on to play. Holy Cross won, Philians nothing. Thanks, Jocelyn, for writing in the score. It was uh, Fumba, F-O-M-B-A, Fumba Fumula, scoring for Holy Cross. Beautiful, beautiful finish. Here we have Philians lining up again. Nine minutes here, that's unofficial, but that's where we're getting it from the broadcast booth. Here we have Tyler Kirby. And again, the ball goes out of over the touchline where we have Thumba and Tyler Kirby working the ball with Henderson, along with Isaac Bonnesteel back to Stanford. And we have Stanford clearing the ball. Here we have Bobby Gamba. Belly to Pope. Up to we have Taylor Smith and a good defensive play again by Alex Smith, who has showed up here to play in the early goings of this contest. Rick, what do you see so far in this contest? Well, back and forth, uh, Holy Cross started off with two corner kicks. Uh, they used their speed uh, on the last first goal of the game. Uh, if you said Famba Famubula, I can't pronounce his name, whatever. Uh, international player, yeah. uh, great speed. Uh, Shepard was handcuffed when he tapped it into the open cage. Nine minutes in, and now if you're thinking as a Phillies team, you gotta score twice now. Well, the thing is too, the pressure I feel, the pressure coming into this uh, tournament Definitely on the feelings, because feelings have known probably to choke in the playoffs. Well, you, you we use that word loosely, yes. Well, they've had a long history of not the, the finishing off of the regular season the success. So and, are they uh, second to guessing themselves at this stage, would you think, Rick? Uh, you step back one who has been sharp all season, like I mentioned uh, at the top of the broadcast. Uh, only allowed a league low 15 goals in 20 matches, and all of a sudden nine minutes in, they're down one nothing in a playoff game. That's what I'm thinking, Rick. What, you know, what what game? It's a mental game as as well as what it is physical. Here we have uh, Bobby Gamba outside to 11. We have Simon Pope. Villas Belanger 
watching from Alberta. Welcome Alberta, welcome all of Canada and in particular fans of provincial soccer here in Newfoundland and Labrador. And Braden Shepard, uh, the goaltender for the Phillians who had a league high 12 shutouts this season. Uh, that was only his second shot directed at him. Uh, he had no chance on a goal board. No, I'm not, not at all. I don't think he. that's what he expected. But uh, Fumbo, when Fumbo got in, he was pretty calm, cool on, exactly. on, fin on his finish. Eh? Very clinical, as they say, uh, in, in his Premier League. Right on there, uh, Rick. And again, uh, with me here today is uh, Rick Farrell. Uh, Rick, uh, I guess uh, years upon years with with color with uh, CHCM with BLCM and with the Southern Gazette in the news writing department. Here we have again a nice play there by Alec Pretty. Hello, Guy Holt. Guy Holt watching in and all to all the viewers. I may not get an opportunity to say everyone's name, but I want to welcome you all to Gordcast live streaming here from the King George to Fifth Field. As we have the first place Felians playing the second place Holy Cross Crusaders. The winner of today's contest goes directly to the final. And the loser will play in the semifinals at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Right now we are approaching the 15 minute mark. And at 9 minutes we had Fumba Fubula with a clinical finish for Holy Cross. And we, I think we're in for a great contest. And we have fans and they keep Coming by the numbers here, Rick. Yes, with the 4.30 start, I guess people getting out of work here in the local area in St. John's and all the people that have traveled from the Bjorn Peninsula and other surrounding areas are coming in here now. And we're filling up the stands beautifully, probably close to a thousand fans right now. Here we, have, weekend. here we have Thomas Perry clearing the ball, three parts of the field to Harry Carter. And again, it's a nice clearing by, uh, we have uh, Rig Rig looking to go long to Aaron Buckingham, but it was cleared by number 12 for Holy Cross Crusaders, Andrew Stanford. Stanford calmly takes the ball back to Thomas Pierway. Pierway looking to go long, and is, uh, again, it's cleared by Greg Reed. Center back for the Felians. Again, we have Greg Reed. Nice ball by Reed. And Reed attempts to go to Loman in midfield, but it's turned over again by Holy Cross. And we have uh, Emmanuel Dolo moving into the 18. We have Emmanuel Dolo. And everywhere Emmanuel Dolo is, we have Fumba Fabula, who was bigger on the play. And we had a big tackle here where we had Tyler Kirby and Bobby Gamba going clashing in center field. And don't you ever think those two teams are not here to play play today. Both of them are battling, and it was the number one goal at the nine-minute mark. I think that sort of puts pressure on the double blue. Exactly. Like we see around the bay, the two tiny teams are going hard at it here. The St. John's Bay teams, you mentioned in the regular season, the Philians won the Bobby Green Memorial Trophy, a great Holy Cross player uh, in his own right, a Hall of Famer. Philians had 15 wins in the regular season, only four losses and one tie for 46 points. Holy Cross, 57 points behind them, on a record of 12, 5, and 3. Back to luck. And here we had uh, Philians again, winning the majority of the battles in the air. It was Taylor Smith, and the ball goes out of touch. With a show in by Simon Pope Pope to Aaron Buckingham, Buckingham to Isaac, no, to Isaac Bonasteel. And back to Ellie Pretty, Pretty looking to go to Fumba. No time whatsoever. Here we have Smith again, back to Bobby Gamba. I'd like to welcome Neil Edwards and all the viewers of Vermont and in particular the Bjorn Peninsula here as we battle in Challenge Cup, Johnson Insurance Challenge Cup action here at King George the Fifth Park in St. John's where we have Gortaz live streaming with a one to nothing score for Holy Cross after 70 minutes of action. Rick, back to Mr. Furl. 
Yes, uh, another foul on Tampa Bay, but a few the uh, and a Holy Cross free kick. They had that ball played quite well. It's one of the, and a turnover. Another turnover. Turnovers can be critical with a nice play here by Stanford taking the ball away from uh, Carter Mackey. Adventure into it, the venture into it. Both coaches are standing in front of their venture. The adrenaline is growing here at King George as you look the winner go directly to the final. What an advantage it is. Exactly, and this always has paid dividends over the years, with exception of a couple of years uh, where teams had to win all three games to win the precious uh, let's go. Uh, Stanford moving inside. Andrew Stanford in where he has, I feel, become a, one of the all-time greats in, in the league right now with regard to getting his head on the ball. He can, I've seen him on numerous occasions. For some reason, he has great foresight in reading the play. And uh, again, he got his head on and it just went wide on Braden Shepard. Other than that, it would have been a two to nothing score for Holy Cross. Here we have Simon Pope battling with Thumba. We have Isaac Bonasteel. Gordon, you talk about Holy Cross's uh, well-balanced attack. had 12 uh, with uh, affiliates. The taller Kirby had also had 12. Uh, Jake Horn had 9. Isaac Bannistil had 8. And Scotty Woodfine had 6. So it's a very well-balanced offensive uh, team that uh, Holy Cross has. And let's not forget, three of the last four Challenge Cups have been received by the Holy Cross Crusaders. And a number of them, uh, I think they have some uh, several leaders on their, on their team, uh, Holy Cross, and they know what it takes to win and play in the big game. Here we have Simon Pope to Philly. Philly with a nice run on the ball, nice work taking the ball from Owen McLeish. Here we have Andrew Stanford clearing the ball. Back to Owen McLeish. Ball is back again to Isaac Bonasteel. Taken by Jake Warren. Jake Warren with a one touch and a ball cleared nicely by Greg Reed. Here we have a Loman pushing the ball to Emmanuel Dolo. We have Pope and Fumba coming together. And a whistle is blown on the play. And it's a free kick coming up for Holy Cross. Again, you are tuning in to Gordcast live streaming from King George to Fifth Field in St. John's, where we have Johnson and Sean jumping up action. And we currently have the Holy Cross Crusader leading Philians on a goal at the nine minute mark coming by Fumba Fabula. Here we have Fumba again with a nice ball shot on net and it's taken. Calmly by Braden Shepard. Shepard puts the ball out to Bobby Gamba. Gamba looking to go to Buckingham. Buckingham uh, let it ride onto Stanford, taken by um, Jeff Slaney. Slaney back to looking to go long to his player, but it was intercepted again by defender Greg Reed. Philians are, uh, I guess, playing against the wind, and it's two Holy Cross advantage. But I feel the game by Rick is very physical, and uh, well, yes, a lot I was of the battles. Going eh? to bring it up because uh, we're only 22 minutes in that court, and Philians, uh, I guess, the defensive strategy today to foul the Holy Cross boards. They've had six fouls and hard fouls, and giving up six free kicks. Again, we have Philians moving in. Emmanuel Dolo, and I can say every time that Emmanuel 
Dolo is there. There's two or three Holy Cross players. Again, we have uh, Bonnesteel taking the ball, looking to go long where we have Bobby Gamba to Philly. Philly to Smith to Simon Hope. Hope looking to go to Harry Carter and Harry Carter stepped over the ball where it's been picked up calmly by Thomas Pierway. The goalkeeper, number one, and in goal, Thomas Pierway for the Holy Cross Crusaders. And it's, it's Bumba Fabula looking to go to Jake uh, Warren and the ball is just goes over the goal line when we have a goal kick coming up for feelings for Braden Shepherds. Anything developing in the first 23 minutes, Rick? You have to think that uh, the confidence level now of uh, Holy Cross uh, has risen. Uh, 23 minutes into the opening half, they got that early goal at the nine minute mark, and they've continued to take the win to their advantage, and they've really put the pressure on the Phillies' back line. I think they probably hit the most pressure they've had all season, uh, uh, Gord. Yeah, Holy Cross are definitely uh, not allowing uh, Phillies through the green at all. Here again we have uh, Windsor for the Phillies, and the ball stolen by Kirby, Tyler Kirby. Kirby to Bonasteel, back to uh, attempting to go to Kirby, and it's, uh, it's uh, Greg Reed letting the ball run over the touchline, where we have a throw in coming to Phillies. The pressure, and there is no doubt, it, in the early going, sort the first half of the first half, we're looking at Holy Cross not giving Felians the room that they've had all season. And again, we have Fumba. Fumba with a nice block put on Fumba by Simon Pope. You have to give credit to the Holy Cross midfield too, that the old McLeese and Isaac Bonnesteel and Harry Carter have the total midfield and they've been really feeding their forwards up front. Meantime, uh, there's been a little uh, feedback from the midfield of the feelings of Smith, uh, Alanda and uh, Lamone to date. They're going to have to straighten up in midfield uh, defensively uh, Gord if they want to get back in this game. I, I, I fully agree with you, Rick. Right now, the battle that has been won in midfield has been won by Holy Cross. Here's a chance again. Here we have Holy Cross on the attack again. Holy Cross with we had Jake Ward. Holy Cross are here and Holy Cross are meaning business. The first 25 minutes, it's probably been 60-40 and that's been lenient for uh, for uh, feelings. I would say realistically, we're probably looking at a 70-30 with regards to uh, Holy, Cro Holy Cross, Cross dominating the, no the early goings of this uh, contest. Again, we have Braden Shepard kicking the ball to center field, thinking by Andrew Stanford. And the hit ball person. up off of Stanford goes to Philly. Philly outside to Simon Pope. Pope to Emmanuel Dolo and Dolo again. Marking. Holy Cross has had superior marking and challenging throughout the first half. Here we have Henderson again looking to go to Carter Mackey. Where we have uh, Jake Warren, Jake the Snake, looking to go through. And again, it's Taylor Smith and Greg Reed. Reed is to Loman again, and again is Isaac Bonnesteel in midfield, challenging uh, Loman. And the ball goes over the touchline with a throw in coming to Porfelians. Here we have Philly, nice, nice. Skillful play for Philly moving around uh, Jake Warren. Again, Holy Cross carry stealing the ball. The ball's gone to Jake Warren on the outside looking to go past Greg Reed. Here we have two formidable opponents there, and we have Jake Warren going right inside. And it was attempted by Philly, but a nice defensive play by Taylor Smith. It's feeling practically all on the defense here in the first half. Here we have Emmanuel Dolo looking to go to right side, and he's been blocked by 
John Henderson, and then I'll give a break and hear Rick take her away. What are you still seeing here, Rick? I there's a continual onslaught by the Holy Cross Crusaders uh, soccer club here this afternoon. They've uh, taken a one nothing lead, and they're not satisfied with us playing on their heels. They're looking for that big, crucial second goal now. A two goal lead here now could change everything. Having said that, though, the Philians uh, got to get some offense uh, together and they got to sort of feed Mandel Dole and Buck again. If not, it could be a long afternoon. Here we have Buckingham. Here we have Buckingham again taking the ball. Nice ball by Buckingham, hoping to go to Carter Mackey, and we have sliding on the play. We have Andrew Stanford looking like to have injured the right uh, leg just down below the knee in the ankle area. But I'm sure, I think Andrew is an old longtime warrior, and he'll be back. And he's back on the right now. I'm sure there's lots of players playing with aches and pains at this point in the season after having after having uh, 20, 20 games in the regular season. But what do you think? Plan is for Holy Cross to take away the, the two stirs on the Felians, two off their stirs, Emmanuel Dolo and Philly Yolanda. Hey, you, you talk about the back line of Holy Cross, of uh, Stanford and Pretty in the middle with Henderson and Zlany on the outside. They've done a great job of containing the, those two holy uh, Philian forwards. And they've only directed uh, three shots towards the goal here in the first 30 minutes, uh, Gord. No doubt, and uh, it, it's, it's about uh, not allowing the time. And here we have Bobby Gamba missing the ball in the play and recovering the ball nicely as he takes the ball away from Tyler Kirby. Here we have Loman, Loman moving up. And it's uh, Harry Carter and Jeff Sweeney battling back to Philly. Philly pushing the ball to um, Aaron Buckingham. This time here we have Philly back again. To Bobby Gamba, to Greg Reed. Up to Loman again. Loman on the outside attempting to formulate with Tyler Windsor. Back to Harry or to uh, Carter Mackey with a ball going in deep inside. The 18 and here we have Simon Pope moving up and it was a nice block by Shane Henderson. Phil just had 15 touches on the ball that time, the most sustained effort of the whole match and it resulted in a goal scoring opportunity <coughs> and now we have a throw in the court. And again, uh, Emmanuel Dolo taking the ball, throwing it in to Taylor Smith Smith trying to work, it looked like Smith with a nice ball across and a clear by Andrew Stanford taking the ball right off the head of Aaron Buckingham. Here we have Kirby again. Tyler Kirby runs miles. He puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Here we have again, Felians, we have a Philly on the outside to Tyler Windsor. Windsor looking to go to Loman, but now we have Stanford. Stanford looking. We have a change on the play. I never saw that. Rick, it looks like uh, 13 has come in. That 13 has come in. That would be uh, for Holy Cross. That's Steve DeLong into the game here, Rick. Okay, yes, I can uh, yes. that as well. So we'll try to see who, who he has replaced. It looks like to be Jake Warren, actually. Here we have nice ball there by Watch Me. We have a foul. Yeah, a foul at about the 25 yards or so. So we have Jake Warren has gone to the bench. And coming in, we have uh, Steve DeLong. And if you can put uh, Jake Warren on the bench, Rick, doesn't that tell you about the talent you have on a team? A very deep uh, roster for Holy Cross has, but getting back to this all-important set play now, uh, Gord, uh, four, five player wall put up, a Fielding's player also in the wall. A chance now for the Fielding's to have a good scoring opportunity. Okay. 25 yards out, could it be dangerous. Looks, this where is Emmanuel Tolo, folks. Keep an eye 
don't build up your cup of coffee here right now. Here we have Smith, and we have Ooh. We have Emmanuel Dolo. What a fantastic shot there by Emmanuel Dolo. I saw him score a number of them. I'd like to welcome Rudy Drake here from Leduc, Alberta. Welcome Rudy to Gordcast here as you're taking in the Johnson Insurance Shaman's Cup. Where we have Holy Cross leading Fidian by a score of one nothing. Here we have Harry Carter battling with Simon Pope. It's been a battle, and the majority of the battles in the first half, I would have to say, are, have gone to the red and gold. And obviously, they've got it where it counts the most. They have a one to nothing lead here on a goal coming at the nine minute mark off of Fumba, Fumba Fabula. Nice ball here by Buckingham. Buckingham looking to go to Carter. Carter Mackey, Mackey, um, looking to go back to Taylor Smith. And it's been intercepted by Philly in midfield. Philly to his partner and is taken away again. Here we have Steve DeLong and DeLong don't need to play as good as anyone in the league. He's a great setup man. Ball is taken by midfield player Taylor Smith out to Lowman. Out to Buckingham, and we have good defensive play by uh, Isaac uh, Bonacy. You know, it's Owen McLeish. I'd like to say hello to Norm Butt there as well. Tuning in from Canning, Nova Scotia. We have Alberta, BC. We have all the province of Canada tuning in. In the meantime, we have live action here as we... As we have a ball, no, I think, looking at that, it looks to be just outside. No, it's called against Felians, where we have a free kick coming up for the Felians, will be taken by Thomas Pierway. Yellow card, getting out too. I didn't see it. 20, Aaron Buckingham. Yep. First yellow card, getting out by referee Pippen. One yellow card, two yellow cards in a game. Let's not forget, fans. Two yellows and it equates to a red. Here we have seven gone off for, that would be Harry Carter, gone to the bench for Holy Cross and coming in at the 35 minute mark, we have John Hockle. I'd like to say hello to Kathy Mullen. For those of you that don't know her, she's partner for Scrappy Mullen, Paul Mullen. Paul's wife. Kathy shouting out as she would. She sent a reminder yesterday that this is the 30th anniversary since Holy Cross won the, uh, their national Challenge Cup and it was won in Saskatchewan. Mike McCarty, great work. Watching from Vegas. Great work, Gord, watching poolside from Vegas. Welcome, Vegas. Richard Thompson tuning in from Cornerbrook. And again, we're back to live action where we have Braden Shepard, goalkeeper for the Felians, taking the uh, free kick here. And we have my good friend Freeman Hillier who is visiting grandchildren in Nova Scotia. Comes from the Bjorn Peninsula and a huge fan of St. Lawrence Origins. Here we have Bobby Gamba being challenged by Tyler Windsor. Windsor. Gamba and uh, Greg Reed have been challenged in this first half. And here we have Tyler. Windsor again been stopped by Gamba and Hope. And Hope been stopped by Fumba. Ball is taken away again by Fumba. What a nice ball through and again it's Taylor's bit for the feelings. It's Holy Cross. It's Holy Cross putting pressure on the feelings all through the first half. I'm impressed with the pace of this game uh, today, uh, Gord. For the first 37 minutes, uh, both uh, clubs have really. Uh, 
had a great pace of the game, quick tempo, uh, great movement on the ball, uh, lots of uh, pressuring on the, the backs, and lots of challenges in the midfield, and a bunch of hard, tough fouls. So it may pay off in the end for one of these clubs if, if they wear each other down. And here we again, we have the ball taken by Aaron Buckingham and cleared by uh, Andrew Danford. A good game here, a good solid game, and it looks like to be a foul against Holy Cross at possibly the 18, 19 yard line. Not a penalty shot, but at a foul just outside of the 18, where we have Emmanuel Dolo sitting up on the, uh, I don't know, he's standing on the 18, and I would think, yeah, the official is asking him to step back a yard or so. I ask all fans that are tuning in, do me a favor, fans, why don't you share? Share your Facebook and so that I can get, we can get as many viewers as possible to be able to tune in to all of your friends. I'll kindly ask you to share. Here we have Emmanuel Dolo with a nice shot to the short side and it was Thomas Birway with a uh, great read on the plate. Kind of made, made it look easy. Thank Ken Roll tuning in from Nova Scotia with a like and share. And I kindly ask everyone to share. Again, we have Greg Reed, Simon Pope, Rudy Drake. Share. Come on, folks, let's share it. And here we have Henderson. Here we have uh, Steve DeLong with a nice ball to Henderson with a nice ball back. And then we have Tyler Kirby inside of the uh, eight or six yard box and a nice save by Braden Shepard, but it was uh, Kirby not getting a lot on the ball. It's Holy Cross continue to uh, push and to challenge during this first half. Carol Beck here, Tom Lamb here a few times. Thanks, Tom, you always share. Again, the ball is outside to Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo going around, attempting to go around Henderson. And the ball is taken by Dolo, looking to go across. And we have CDN sharing, Andrew Perot sharing. Again, a nice crew here in attendance at King George the fifth field. I've been across the nation as much as 24 times taking in Challenge Cup action votes, and there's no more liver action than what you get at King George the fifth. Back to my partner, Rick Pearl. Rick, what do you think? Well, 40 minutes in, Gord, and uh, I'll go back to the two free kicks that the Phillies have had from Emmanuel Dolo, one that missed the top corner, and the last one we saw several minutes ago, a great save by uh, Thomas Perraway. So just a couple of chances the Phillies have had with the kind of great scoring opportunities, and they really tied this game up. Having said that, the pressure at Holy Cross has exerted this afternoon so far has uh, them currently enjoying a 1-0 lead here with four minutes to go before uh, stoppage time. I won't be streaming the awards. Myself and Rick will be taking a break as well as we have Tyler Kirby moving in. And again, we, here we have Tyler Kirby moving in. And Tyler Kirby looking to go short. And it's just all over the net here. Great player, of course. Absolutely, he's speed. all over the field. Great deal of speed. What I like too, Rick, is notice Steve DeLong, a veteran Steve DeLong, uh, is uh, coming in late, same as with John Hockle. That's the experience of the coach bringing in those veteran players late in the first half. Uh, great to Stanford, great bench boss, a winner at every level, got coaching, ladies as well. <coughs> Ball has been taken by uh, Philly and now has been battled by Steve DeLong. Nice ball, nice footwork by Philly in midfield. Over to Bobby Gamba and attempting to go to Aaron Buckingham. And then we have Buckingham moving in. We have Buckingham moving in. Buckingham and it's just over. And it's Thomas Pierway getting his hand on the ball or it appeared to get his hand on the ball. And we had a referee ordering a corner kick. That's the best bit of work Buckingham has done here in the first half. 
and Dolo, they picked up their game the last 10 minutes, and you'll see them getting more opportunities, and that's been a pretty close. Well, maybe that, this matchup. they may have to go with uh, using Buckingham rather than always manual Dolo. Exactly, I agree with you with that versus speed. He saw it, strength in the box. A now, superb effort. A yes. superb effort. Now we have a corner kick. 42 minutes have gone by, and again we have feelings. And the ball has been blocked by four uh, Holy Cross players, where we have Steve DeLong looking to go to Tyler Kirby again. Tyler Kirby and a... Okay, a whistle blown on Tyler Kirby. And you have both teams battling. And earlier I said about going across the country. And you have, yes, you have great national tournaments, but provincially, I would rank the NLSA tournament up with the best in the country. Here we have uh, Simon Pope looking to go long, and again is Andrew Stanford clearing the ball for Holy Cross. Again, you are tuning in to Gordcast, live streaming Johnson Insurance Challenge Club action. Their 43 minutes of action have gone by, and we have a one nothing score for Holy Cross, but goal coming by Fumba Fabula at the nine minute mark. It's been Holy Cross, the better team of the first half, but we still, the game is far from over. Where we have Emmanuel Dovo over to Philly, Philly to uh, Greg Reed, Reed looking to go long to. Carter Mackey Mackey and ball has been taken by number 10 Taylor Smith and Smith puts the ball back to Simon Pope and Pope I just think he got under it too much to win the wind is high and basically miscued on attempting to pass the ball over what well, nothing okay Rick he may, he may have rushed it uh, and his teammates should be telling him he had lots of time Again, we have Taylor Smith to Loman and cleared by Ellie Smith. We have in center field, we have 13 looking to field very well. Deep inside to John Hockle. Hockle pushing the ball through and looking for Steve DeLong, but it's cleared by uh, Feelings again. I like to say hello and my good friend. Uh, Maureen Cavanaugh and Gary, a always good follower, supporter of soccer. And uh, so hello Maureen and hello to you your, and your husband Gary. Maureen, again we have a corner kick as we approach the 45 minute mark. We're seconds away. But there will be some referee time as we, well we're five seconds away. One to nothing for Holy Cross. Oh, again we have Holy Cross there. The goalie coming out. Well off the dropper for Holy Cross at the 45 minute mark. Feelings have been hit by a tidal wave here in the first half. The goal scoring is no reflection, but the challenges and the effort of wanting to win has been matched and sometimes been overpowering for by the Holy Cross Crusaders. Again, we have Alec Pretty clearing the ball, dominating center back for, for Holy Cross. Like to say hello to my good friend there, uh, Frank Slaney as well. Hello, Ben. Ben is watching in. I saw Howard and, uh, and Christopher walking in, watching the game. Ball's been taken by Ellie Pretty and clear. Ellie is looking at the clock as he goes on. Nice ball by Steve DeLong. Back to I'd like to say hello to the former director of officials, Mike Evans. And we have reached the first half. 45 minutes. Give us a second to take our breath and I'll be back with Rick Farrell and Rick will give you all the stats, a good summary of the first half and, and I'll ask Rick what can we expect for the second half. We'll be back in two minutes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we have cider. Hey, Ian. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Again, I ask everyone to kindly share. I'm asking you appreciate GoreCast. I kindly ask you to to share GoreCast so that we can reach, we can top the scales here in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador and watching our provincial final that we will outnumber any any of the other provincial championships throughout the country in senior men's soccer. Again, uh, okay. I'd like to say hello to my uh, my uh, sister who is watching the game at home as well here. Uh, she's uh, in uh, St. John's for the weekend. Currently watching the game via live stream at home. Finding it too cold. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I was telling him he's he's only on Gordcast. I was talking to him. Yeah. Jim Crow trying to trying to get the game. I told him you're on you're on Gordcast. He didn't write back to me though. But if anyone shares, yeah, they can pick him up that way. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna see if I can. Lamb shirt with me. Yeah. I don't know what he, uh, okay, folks. Mr. Rick Farrell alongside of me here, the latest builder in the Bjorn Peninsula Soccer Association Hall of Fame. Is on side of me, and for those of you who don't know, Rick is a veteran, uh, I guess, sports writer, sports personality, uh, writer, newspaper writer with the Southern Gazette, coverage for BOCM, CHCM. Uh, Rick, give us a breakdown on the first half. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for the parties. And I came back to this game, this opening half. 2018 Johnson and Jordan's uh, special challenge cup for the uh, men, senior men's. Uh, Holy Cross uh, got their olive board in the first goal of the game at the seven minute mark. And Famba Fambubula scored a beautiful uh, goal as he got fed into the uh, center back area, went in there and tapped the pass. Uh, Goaltender Braden Shepard, who had no chance on her. Uh, the tail of the tape show Holy Cross uh, directing. 13 shots at goal, of which uh, Philly and Colton and Shepard had to handle eight of them. Philly, the meantime, only had uh, six, seven shots directed at goal, and Thomas Pearway had to make three saves, including two off of Emmanuel Dolo and one off Buckingham. Corner kicks, a Holy Cross had four, including one in stoppage time at the half that resulted in the ball going off the crossbar and from Holy Cross grabbing a very important two-goal lead which they never. That could be a turning point now in this match as we see in the second half starts. Three kicks, uh, Holy Cross uh, had enjoyed 12 of them. The Sicilians were really playing a hard tackling style and had as many as a dozen fouls. In the meantime for Sicilians, they had uh, seven fouls and seven free kicks. One card was given out, uh, Aaron Buckingham, at the 34 minute mark for the Villians by referee David Pittman. And time of possession, we could probably uh, agree that uh, Holy Cross dominated. Uh, they were wind aided, of course, in the opening half, but they also played quite well offensively and probably a 70 to 30 in favor of possession, uh, Gore. Yeah, I, I certainly had to agree with your analysis in the percentage of play. And even statistics with uh, shots and free shots and all that rhetoric is a reflection of the dominance of uh, Holy Cross. Their speed, particularly today, uh, up front, when we mentioned that they had a great, uh, very balanced offensive attack. Uh, they had Jake Warren up front, Tyler Kirby, and uh, Fubala who scored the goal. But they also made two uh, key moves. They brought in uh, Jake uh, Warren, came out, in comes Steve DeLon. Harry Carter comes out, he knows uh, Joe Hockle, John Hockle, sorry. And these people also created offense. 
Uh, we're also quite impressed, as we said during the opening half, as the play at the midfield of uh, Lake Ross, Owen McLeese, Bonner, Steele and Carter. They play quite well and control the midfield. There was a, 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 a five minute segment of play that the game kind of changed uh, for a moment. As the Philians started controlling the ball better, kept it on the ground, and uh, at one sequence, as many as 15 touches on the ball. Buckingham, uh, you mentioned before, maybe the uh, Philians should be feeding Buckingham more. This is faster, it's solely on Emmanuel Dolo. They may have to make a lot of changes at halftime as a coach court, a uh, former coach. Uh, what are the things now that the Philians have to do? They know they get it now, uh, one nothing. A crossbar was uh, late in the game. Yeah, I, I would think, Rick, and uh, I'm glad you asked me that, Rick, because I was thinking, uh, as you were chatting there, like, uh, Philians are going to have to make some adjustments. And maybe the biggest adjustment is to get more involved. Uh, I think during the season, the Phillies were possibly the most running team in the league. However, because of I, I, I feel the intensity of Labor Day weekend, the speed increases that much more. And it, it is the speed, despite Emmanuel Dolo and Aaron Buckingham, it, it's the midfield of the Phillies that uh, I feel like, not only that, you mentioned the forwards for uh, no, the midfield of Holy Cross. Well, let's not forget uh, Thumba Fabula and Tyler Kirby, the amount of running that they did. Yes. And then uh, the coach, not only that, had Jake Moore down there, then he took in Jake Jake Moore for the last 15 minutes or so. He puts out Steve DeLong. Then he takes in uh, uh, a replacement for John Hunko. Carter. Yeah, Harry Carter. So he's far bullets at them all through the first half. His constant pressure. Then when Philians were looking at it for the whistle to blow, Holy Cross were more engaged in scoring uh, a second goal. And came as close as he could, breaking the goal, the ball off the crossbar uh, in referee stopping line. And that right now, I will begin a bold prediction. Maybe a big 20 point this game. Second half, you gotta play a better uh, goal. Or is it possible not to play any better? Like, did it not play a good first half? Well, the best players I felt on on the Philians in the first half were Greg Reed yes. and and say the, the other three backs. We yes. have Bobby Gamba, yeah. Tyler Windsor, and we have had Simon. But what does that tell you? Uh, that you were defending instead of <laughs> you got her, Rick. You got her. Yeah. So what I'm saying is. The players in midfield and the forwards got to get more engaged in the activity of the ball in the center field as well as moving up the field. Emmanuel Tolo and, and we'll say uh, Aaron Buckingham and the midfield players, the three, four midfielders that Felian's got there, that would be Lamond, Lamond uh, Smith, Smith, and Philly. And Philly. Yeah. They got to get engaged to that they got to dominate. That didn't happen in the first half. And heads off to the Holy Cross Crusaders team because they were really uh, pace boys, tempo boys, had pressure from the opening whistle, and it resulted in the goal just nine minutes in. And then, as we felt, Philly was looking at the clock running down, going to the locker room. And boom, the corner kick comes in off the crossbar. So, so concentration level, uh, lack of focus, two things that the uh, coaching staff, Mr. Shane Anthony and Bernie Manning, uh, will, and Gus Richards will be addressing, I'm sure, in that Philly's clubhouse. And we said, during the broadcast, three times these teams have moved the beat. So expect more in the second half. No doubt about it. And this is why I made the full prediction that I made during the week. Because I too learned back in the uh, early 90s, it's a diff different level. And when you get there for the first time, and for the first time, we have billions winning the Bobby, Moon, uh, Bobby Green Memorial and expected to be 
Uh, the fingers. Yeah. You know, they're coming in there, and uh, you we were saying the drought uh, fill ins, uh, the double blues, have uh, went through since 1969. The 49 year drought. Maybe they can end it this year, but it will have to play a lot better in the second half because they're lucky enough to get a double life. There is no doubt they have a second chance, and they earned it. Res respectfully, respectfully so, they earned it because they won the first, and they only lost four games out of 20. Exactly. But the, the, the fact that you have Emmanuel Bolo that is a superstar, and Pelly Alanda is a stupid superstar in, in the league in the regular season, that's no given that you're going to dominate, Rick, in the playoffs. No, and uh, uh, the, the lack of effort, uh, well, that's not probably a good choice of words. Uh, disinterest, not being engaged, like you said again. Uh, that all was just so evident from the video that we have been showing to all the viewers out there on the broadcast. Uh, you can see the domination by Holy Cross and the pace that they employed. And when you have your back line, uh, who give up just only 15 goals all summer, Polk, Gamba, and Reed, and Windsor, who are the best players. Exactly, like you mentioned before. That means that your your attacking, your midfield, were not existent. Yeah, I would, if I were the coach, Rick, I'll get back to yours, and I'll, yes. I'll answer it with a hard punch. <laughs> I would simply walk in there, I'd let the players chat with one another. And then, for the last five minutes, I would take control of that dressing room. Yes. And then I would tell them, guys, it's a different season. Holy Cross knows how to win championships. We want to win a championship, and if we want to win it, we're going to have to go out and battle harder. And it means for every one of those 10 players that are on the field, the goalie was no issue, the goal, the goal score was no fault of no. his. There was a miscue that happened on the defense of Felians, and as a result, uh, Fumbo went in, and I, I like what he did. Very skillful, very calm, very collective. Yeah. Put it to the back of the net, and you couldn't blame Braden Shepard. But the mental laps, lapse that I saw in the last minute, I knew that the Felians, I looked at the clock, Felians were looking at the clock as well. They were, they were, uh, I guess, so eager to get to the dressing room, they forgot to play the last 30 seconds or so. And that has to change, their intensity has to change in the second half as they uh, get ready to come out here in the 2018 Johnson Insurance Challenge Cup game number one. Uh, the, later on this evening, uh, we'll be back on the broadcast, uh, just like the viewers at Renault and St. Lawrence Origins taking on the CBS Strikers Football Club, and this should be also a very interesting match. Uh, right now, Gord, are you going to a break? Well, right now I'm going to go back to, and uh, if I can remember, uh, also in the boot alongside of us folks uh, is uh, Ian Chater, and I'll get Ian to repeat. Uh, Ian is carrying uh, this tournament uh, over uh, Twitter. NLSA have accepted technology, and uh, you know, every little ounce of PR helps. Rick, what is your Twitter handle? Uh, the handle is at soccer NLSA, which is for Newfoundland Soccer, which is the Newfoundland Labrador Soccer Association. So at soccer NLSA. Send us your tweets, follow us on Twitter, send us whatever you want, pictures, show us you're in the crowd, having a good time, do it all. Because we're having a laugh. What a game of soccer we got going here, boys. And again, folks, that's Ian Chater. Ian, uh, Ian is uh, involved in uh, media with regards to live streaming, uh, color, play-by-play. Well, -play. he's on the Twitter and, and uh, great for him. He's also uh, involved with, uh, my understanding, uh, he's director at Ian LSA uh, level for uh, uh, CBS. CBS. So and here he is with the Ian LSA this weekend carrying uh, at soccer in LSA. At soccer, very simple. Can't get more simpler than that, folks. So if you want to uh, give him a show, tell him how great he is, or 
up to yourself. Yeah. And if you're in the stands, folks, let's get it out and about. The only thing I'm asking you to do for my sake and Gorecast's sake and for the sake of Newfoundland and Labrador soccer, I want this to be the premier tournament in provincial soccer in all of Canada. I want you to share it. I want you to share this game that you're watching here today, one versus two, with the winner goes directly to the final. I want you to share three versus four, and so that we can have record numbers. One to nothing here after halftime, I appreciate if you put it in. One to nothing for Holy Cross with a goal coming at the nine minute mark off the boot of Thumba Fubula. So it's Holy, Holy Cross. You can, what's that called? Okay, back. You share, you share, that way it allows all of your friends to watch this live streaming here. Great game, it's a great game. Some, uh, some uh, player movement out there, uh, uh, Rick, so we'll, uh, take a look at the numbers, Rick, and see if you can get back to us. Here we have Aaron Buckingham. Buckingham going, battling with Henderson. And we have uh, Steve DeLong, number 19 in for the Phillies. Cesar Figueroa, he's in. I'm not sure who's out. Mr. Farrell won't be too long before he gets to that. We have Philly. Philly back to Greg Reed. Reed looking to go to, again, Emmanuel Dolo. The double uh, marking on Emmanuel Dolo, it is, to me, uh, what you would expect from a top-notch team as Holy Cross. But the thing is, then, that allows Aaron Buckingham. And if Aaron Buckingham is marked, it then allows other space for midfield players to get engaged. Here we have Feli Orlando battling. Feli Orlando going with Owen McLeish and blocked and stopped by Andrew Stanford. Stanford hits the ball along with Bobby Gamba. Cesar Figueroa back to Bobby Gamba. Gamba looking to go long to uh, Smith. And the Holy Cross are still running, folks. Nice ball by Holy Cross. And we have a nice read by the goalie, Braden Shepard. Shepard looked to go long, too. We have Devin Ryan in as well. Number four for the Felians. Devin Ryan is into the contest. Cesar Figueroa is into the contest. And here we have Fumba Fubula with the ball going across. And it looked to be a, a mistake here by uh, a Philian player missing the ball. Jenkins as it goes back to Henderson. And here we have Steve DeLong. DeLong outside of Tyler Kirby. Kirby pushing the ball through. And it again is clear by Philian. Where we have Figaro. Holy Cross are pressuring Philian. They're forcing Philian. They are looking to advance to the final. There's no doubt, but it's only a one goal difference. And as we know, in soccer, it only takes one shot. And it, and it could be all tied up this way, a 70, 30 percentage of ball advantage in favor of Holy Cross in the first half. At Soccer NLSA, we have Ian Cheater, working Twitter account, folks. Let's not forget that man and get Twitter uh, activity on the go. Here we have Devin Wright moving inside and been blocked again by uh, Alex Pretty. Nice ball by Alex Pretty. Great shielding by Alex Pretty. Good defensive play. And we have Thomas Pirouet. Again, you are tuning in to Gordacast, live streaming from King George to Fifth Park in St. John's where we have Johnson Insurance Challenge Cup action, and we have the Holy Cross Crusaders leading the double blues by a score of one to nothing. Winner advances to the final on Sunday. Loser play a semifinal tomorrow against a uh, 3-4 team that play at eight o'clock tonight, and we're talking the St. Lawrence Laurentians and the CBS that pro look strikers. We also have Dylan Jenkins in for uh, the field of number 15 in the back line. We're trying to see how these player moves in the broadcast booth. Uh, 
Okay, Jenkins is in as well. Thanks, Rick, and he's in replacing Tyler Windsor. Yes. And here we have Steve DeLong looking to go around Jenkins. Jenkins back to Greg Reed. And again, the ball is goes out of touch with a throw in. We have Jenkins, Dylan Jenkins. Jenkins looking to go to Buckingham, and Buckingham it is. A nice hit on for Buckingham as he hit the ball right in the middle. But it's Holy Cross. Holy Cross by not giving up. Jeff Sleeney back on the left wing back. Sean Henderson on the right wing back. Alec Pretty and Andrew Stanford in the middle. Very solid four for Holy Cross. Good experience especially by Jeff and Andrew Stanford, been in the league some considerable time. Midfield, we have Owen McLeish, John Huckle. Here we have uh, Caesar Felly Figuero over to Felly. <coughs> then we have uh, Fumba. Here we have Aaron Buckingham. Aaron Buckingham leaning to back and in. the shot goes way wide up the net. 50 minutes of action have gone by here at King George to Fifth Park and we have Holy Cross Crusaders in lead by a score of one to nothing and it was goal scorer Fumba Fabula scoring for Holy Cross. Goal coming at nine minutes. What's up Rick? <laughs> <laughs> we're five minutes into this second half, and uh, we're uh, seeing uh, the Phillies uh, with the win this time aiding them. They know that they have to get back into the game. The coach made three changes at the half. I see that uh, Philly Yolanda is out, and so is uh, Tori Lavola. That's for Ryan, Figueroa, and Jenkins are in. So wholesale changes by Bernie Manning and Shane Antle as they tried to shake up the Phillies who, as we've mentioned before, are the reigning Bobby Green Memorial Trophy first place winners for uh, this season. And they find themselves down 1-0. And looking for offense. Thanks. Yeah, thanks Rick. And again, we have Holy Cross looking to go long from the boot of Stanford looking for Bumba. Bumba, and now we have uh, Steve DeLong going into the goal line. The ball comes across. And we have Braden Shepard taking the ball right off a Holy Cross player. Holy Cross, no signs, Rick, of uh, letting down. Of letting down. Attack, attack, attack. That's the mole, I'm sure, that Coach Stanford uh, told those players at halftime. And I see a couple of guys lining up. They're now uh, warming up, probably to go in. The ball, who is taking the ball here? Again, we have Greg Reed. We have Bobby Gamba. You know, Rick, that tells me the ball is back in the defensive end. Here we have, uh, we have uh, Felians with a great play there by... Uh, Thomas Pierway reading, taking away a possible breakaway by the Phillians. Came out with Lauren Bradley, uh, Gordon that time, and uh, saved the goal by making a first impulse decision. Well, that's what I find in the goaltending in the province right now. I find that at Jubilee, as well as I find it at Challenge Cup, is the fact that the goaltenders are so good in reading the plays. Here we have Emmanuel Tolo putting the ball across and again it's Shane Henry Henderson defense winning the battle. Whistles are heard to hear here as we have the fans cheering, cheering. David and well okay, Rick knows the four officials. Rick, get back to the four officials. Uh, David Pittman is the man in charge here uh, this afternoon, and uh, he's had that one yellow card, and the control is going rather well. Uh, the two linesmen, uh, I have to, uh, sorry, to go ahead. Okay, we have Emmanuel Dolo, folks. This is where he can dance. The ball is put right through the penalty shot area, clear by Jeff Salini. Ball has been taken by... Felian's number 11, Simon Pope, and again is taken by Tyler Kirby. And it's back to Shane Henderson. This time we have a 53 minutes of action have gone by, and we have one to nothing, folks, for Holy Cross. 
53 minutes, one to nothing. We have a couple of Holy Cross players again warming up order. Rick and I'll leave that to Mr. Pearl. Again, Rick, what is your take? I love to answer the first question which the Pippen was refereeing. Matthew Warren and Gord Farrell are the two assistant referees on the lines, and Shannon Tolbin is your fourth official. But Ten minutes in now, 55 minutes into the match. Uh, Holy Cross is still dominating. And here's a shot. That's a beautiful play here, Tyler Kirby. It was, it did appear a little offside. A great, a great play, other than Tyler Kirby had moved in a foot or two. Two feet or so, but it was a great attempt by Holy Cross to put Tyler Kirby away on a breakaway. Here we have uh, Greg Reed, captain of the Felians, looking to clear the ball. Greg calmly walks to the ball to put straight into. And we have, with a great play, a great the Goaltending saved Save. by Thomas Pierway off of Devin Ryan. Wait that one now. Man, oh man, didn't we have a fantastic save. Remember that at the 55 minute mark. Exactly, uh, Rick. Right. It was Devin Ryan getting in behind all defenders, deflected it with a head ball, and it was Thomas Pierway with nothing but a goaltender's reaction. Fantastic save. Maybe the best save definitely off the game so far, Rick. No doubt, uh, definitely uh, give credit to the Philians that they tried to uh, even this match up. And they've had a uh, pretty good start here in the second half with those three additions uh, to their lineup. And they got some jump in their game, a little more pace. That's why I guess Coach Stanford is probably seeing this, sensing this, and he wants fresh legs in there. I would team. think you will see players again by fumble uh, with Holy Cross moving. Well, 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 we had uh, Tyler Kirby all alone looking to go to the left to the short side of Braden Shipper, and it was just meshed. Unfortunately, it was the side of the goal. Rick, uh, don't come a lot closer, Rick. Uh, definitely, this has by no means been a dull affair. It's been a really high octane affair in terms of scoring chances. Both clubs are really uh, making some nice plays, creating offensive chances, and not for some great goaltending, we'd still be up in a different scoring sector. Here we have uh, Jenkins to Tyler's. Smith, Smith into Devin Ryan, been blocked by Alec Pretty. Pretty puts the ball to Cesar Figueroa. Here we have Aaron Buckingham. Again we have Smith back to Philly. Philly looking to orchestrate a play. Maybe two steps too many. If not, it was one step too many. And as a result, it is a foul by Felians and a free kick coming up for Holy Cross. 57 minutes of action have gone by. Joining me here in Gorecast, we have uh, Rick Farrell, and uh, also in the broadcast booth here today is Ian Chater. Carrying the game through Twitter World is at Soccer NLSA and Rick. No signs of either team letting up here in the second half, Rick. No, both sides have uh, played uh, some uh, good soccer. Uh, they've kept the ball on the ground and created some good scoring opportunities, but uh, good goaltending as well. You give credit to both uh, Paraway and Shepard for uh, keeping this game still 1-0. Uh, Philians have to dig down deep now. They know that two goals in the next half an hour is going to be a monumental task. And uh, we see a uh, substitution coming in now, 17, going out for Holy Cross. Okay, Fumba. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Fumba has uh, been taken off. Fumba Fabola, the goal scorer, and coming back in at the 58 minute Jake mark Ward. is Jake Warren. Right here we have uh, Emmanuel Dolo, picked the ball been stolen from Dolo, and here we have Jake Warren up to Steve DeLong. Steve DeLong and the ball has been taken by Bobby Gamba from Greg Reed. Holy Cross still pressing as we have Tyler Kirby. And we have Tyler Kirby. Looked like to go a little wide. What do we have? We had no uh, linesman or the 
what do we call them? The assistant, assistant referee, referee there, there, yeah. Um, assistant referee. Very technical term. Yeah. We got called the linesmen in our days, Gordon. Linesmen in our day. And the linesmen against them. And I would think a lot of the people that are watching it's linesmen to a lot of the... I know you call them other things. <laughs> yeah. And again, we, 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 hold on, we have the uh, Holy Cross. Aliens. Aliens. Aliens, and uh, as we have Feli uh, hitting the ball, striking the ball, it hit uh, uh, Jeff Slaney and it just deflected to Thomas Barraway. Again, both teams getting their chances, both teams melting. Darrell A says thank you and thank you for joining in. All I'm asking here for the viewers of Gordcast that are enjoying the Gordcast, all I'm asking you is to share it. So that way we can reach the largest audience possible. Here we have Jake Warren here and been blocked here by uh, Simon Pope. Very good contest here at King George V Park uh, where we have after 90 minutes of action, we have a Holy Cross leading Felians by a score of one to nothing. Let's not forget the winner goes directly to the championship game on Sunday. Where the loser play in a semifinal game tomorrow. Who will they play? They will play the winner of the Laurentians and CBS. Who will play tonight at 8 o'clock? Here we have uh, Holy Cross. We have Steve DeLong pushing the ball through. And we have uh, Isaac Bonestill getting the head on, but it was just glazed towards the goalie. And here we have Devin Ryan. Ryan looking to go. Nice save here. A nice save there by Thomas Pierway. Thomas Pierway, a fantastic save. He came out, he read the play, he challenged, he put his body and his soul on the line. The ball got somewhat uh, clear, but he, his six foot two, six foot four frame, managed to get it by the fingernail. What a great save, uh, Rick. Yes, you gotta be impressed with uh, Thomas Fairway in the second half for sure. He's made uh, two great saves now and kept the score in favor of Holy Cross. One nothing today, 16 more minutes in. Uh, coming off his line, very aggressive in his style of play, and you mentioned uh, being such a tall individual, six foot six. He grabbed that ball as the Philians player made two and three kicks in it. Here we have uh, Philians again controlling the ball back to Emmanuel Dolo to Cesar Figueroa, back to Bobby Gamba, attempting to Billy. Landa, Philly Landa, they're taking Philly Landa. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, Holy Cross's attack is to stop Philly and Emmanuel Dolo. They are the two stars that came to the club from the Canada Games, along with a number of other young players. But they are, they were two of the stars with the Canada Games, and uh, Holy Cross have pretty well neutralized the two of them throughout out this contest. Again, we have uh, Felians, Taylor Smith, battling with Shane Henderson. The ball goes to Felians for a throw in, 62 minutes. Alec Noseworthy watching in from uh, Fortune. All the fans of Fortune Grand Bank, Bjorn Peninsula, welcome to Gorecast. Challenge Cup action here from King George the fifth to field, where we have Tyler Kirby. Nice ball by Tyler Kirby. Good clear by uh, Greg Reed again. Uh, Owen McLeish, Jake Warren, and again we have Simon Pope moving in. And we had Andrew Stanford looking for the goalie, and Aaron Buckingham was anticipating uh, Andrew's uh, move. But again, it was cleared, and as a result, another throw in going to Fidians. All has been thrown in and going to the big frame of Aaron Buckingham. Nine goals on the season for the Fidians. Second only to Emmanuel Dolo on his team. Here we have Simon Pope back to Emmanuel Dolo. Here we have Jake Moore stealing the ball. 
ball again for Holy Cross. 63 minutes. One to nothing for Holy Cross here. What's your read now, Rick? What's your take? Both sides have settled down. You can see Holy Cross playing a uh, little more defensively and not as attacking as much. And conversely speaking, uh, the Philians, who are desperate to tie this game up, have uh, had a couple of good scoring chances. Uh, but the last few minutes, it's been a pretty even, even play here. A lot of hard tackling on the goal. Uh, some defensive posturing. And now it comes down to who wants the ball more. Uh, who's going to dig down a little deeper uh, to make sure they can get the advantage on their opponent. Here we have Shane Henderson putting the ball deep inside of the Felian's territory. And it just looked to graze the head of a Felian defender and it goes over the goal line with a goal kick, or I'm sorry, a corner kick coming up for a Holy Cross. Should Holy Cross happen to go up two goals, it could be a long road here this afternoon, Rick. No doubt, this is a big play here now, set play in the box. Here again we have the ball been taken by Steve DeLong, this time from a corner kick. And again it looks to be going over the goal line with another corner kick coming up for Holy Cross. Number of corner kicks there. Uh, Rick, what are, what are Holy Cross have for corner kicks throughout the contest, Rick? This is their eighth corner kick as a match. Unbelievable, the number of corner kicks, eh? But one time, one time a, a corner kick was a scoring threat. Not so much March, anymore. Days. I agree with you. Here we have Holy Cross again, pushing the ball through, cleared by Aaron Buckingham. You go back to that uh, comment you made there about uh, corner kicks. Uh, we don't have many players that are as uh, good in the air uh, as we had uh, in the last 20 years. Well, Wilson Lyon was the best ever. If uh, ever, yeah. Best goal scorer. Uh, you are mentioning uh, Stanford has come up, or pretty, for Holy Cross. Uh, Stanford, Stanford has scored a number of goals. Here we have... Holy Cross again coming close there and Felians back on their heels, clearing the ball with the boot of the ball by Greg Reed off of Stanford. Back to Tyler Smith and again it's Greg Reed clearing the ball. And the ball goes out of touch here again with a throw in being awarded to Felians, Devin Ryan. Ryan coming so ever close on Thomas Pierway and Pierway made maybe what I would think was the best save off the contest. Here we have Dylan Jenkins looking to throw to Aaron Buckingham. Buckingham boots the ball into the 18, cleared by Henderson. Here we have the Felians again moving in. And we have Greg Reed. Greg Reed pushing the ball to the outside to Dylan Jenkins. To Greg Reed, Jenkins and over to Felly with a nice read on the play and it was uh, putting the ball right to Devin Ryan. Beautiful ball there by Felly. Yes, the board Devin Ryan had that great on his foot there and great in a prime scoring area and he never got that shot off. Chalk it up to some good defending Felians, by the Holy though, Cross. Felians seem to be getting a little more room now in the second half than you what you would think they got in the first half. Oh, no doubt the 70-30 possession that we talked about in the first half in favor of Holy Cross is probably 50-50 now in uh, 22 minutes so far. It is second half, another sub coming in. Okay, we have Jeff Slaney going to the bench here. Yes, we do. I don't Cross. know if Jeff has had some injury or not. Coming in, we have coming back in, we have uh, Harry Carter. Harry Carter played midfield regularly throughout the season, but with the Canada games, he was a uh, wing back, so no new familiar territory for him. Ball put it again back in by uh, Holy Cross and uh, by the feeling saying it was uh, Jake Warren. Ball again by Harry Carter. Carter into Tyler Kirby. And we have Kirby too. And let's see if I get a number. 
back on. Okay, is number four. It's Isaac Bonasil. 68 minutes have gone by, and you're tuning into Gordcast live streaming from King George uh, Fifth Ball Park in, in St. John's, where we have Holy Cross leading feelings by a score of one to nothing. Winner events to the final. And here we have Tyler Kirby. Tyler Kirby, the ball is cleared by Felians again. And we have Holy Cross on the cliche. I'm trying to get my screen straight. We have Holy Cross again, bottling Felians. Where we have Greg Reed striking uh, number 10, Tyler Kirby, and the ball goes at a touch where we have a throw in coming by Dylan Jenkins. Left wing back come in the second half and replace Tyler Windsor. Down to the nitty gritty, as they say. Uh, Holy Cross still enjoying their one nothing lead from a goal way back at the nine minute mark. And they're holding on to it, not clinging to it, because they've also earned some offensive opportunities themselves. Here they are again. again. We have Steve DeLong moving in, pushing the ball to the outside right to Tyler Kirby. Been defended by Greg Reed. Again, we have. Harry Carter with an overlap with a nice ball right through the 18 yard line and it goes sails right through and here we have uh, Taylor Smith pushing the ball to Aaron Buckingham Buckingham looking to go into Devin Ryan Ryan been tackled and defended nicely by Harry Carter here we have John Hockle Recovering the ball for Holy Cross, back to Isaac Bonasteel. Bonasteel looking to go to Jake Warren, where it was intercepted by Bobby Gamba. The ball has been pushed by Felians now to Aaron Buckingham. Here we have Sean Henderson. A giveaway. Nice tackle by uh, John Huckle to Jake Warren to Steve the Long. Nice ball there, a tip by Steve DeLong, and the ball is outside. Now we have Tyler Kirby. Go back to that overlapping back to uh, character there a few minutes ago for Holy Cross. We don't see enough of that anymore in today's game. Ray Malloy was speaking to me, a great Hall of Famer with the Laurentians, how often Jack Sims employed that strategy back in the 70s and 80s. I remember Vince Pickett speaking about it years ago, uh, and uh, Eugene Brushett with the uh, Marysan United. Yeah, it seems like to me right now that uh, the players don't have the same right to free will. They're kind of defined as specialists in their defense, and I'm with you that the offensive, the offensive game is also can be brought in by your wing uh, midfield and your wing back. Exactly. He's right off the bat, he gets into position, he draws someone else into position. We got uh, Rickas here directing traffic. If you see a strange hand going, Rickas, <laughs> that hand is not just coming from anywhere. If only Maradona had the hand of God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could see the hand coming up in the monitor. So that was Rick there directing yeah. what they made. Uh, well, animated back. here in the broadcast. Yeah. Sorry, folks. I'll stay back in front of the camera. Yeah. So that was about what the wing back said the wing midfield should do. Thanks, Rick. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Looks like we're going to be in for a good finish here today. One goal game, nothing surprising us uh, as they have played each other three times in the one goal margins. Here we have Braden Shepard looking to go long. Then we have uh, Taylor Spit, Isaac Bonasil. Players are battling, players are getting animated on the field as well. Sometimes they are letting the official know that that's not how they saw it, but the manager, David Pittman, I think has done a fantastic job here today. Here we have Thomas Pierway. Pierway looking to go long, and it's by Jake Warren, and it's cleared by Simon Pope. Here we have uh, Belly with Greg Reed. 
Reed Reed looking to go right in front of the boot here where we had number 15, Bill Jenkins. What a throw in with Harry Carter. Carter sloppy looking soccer to now too. Sorry, uh, from sloppy soccer. P players not completing passes. Uh, throw ins down the line, just going to touch. Concentration level has changed. Uh, seems that the players are tiring a bit, but then again, we're 75 minutes into the match, and they've had a pretty intense match so far. I want to say hello to my son there in uh, in uh, Fort Saskatchewan. Uh, Mark, say hello to you and Megan and to Haley here from Gord Pass here, live streaming from uh, King George V, where we have a fantastic game in 1-2. Winner goes to the final, and we have Holy Cross still pressing. We have Tyler Kirby. Kirby looking to go around Jenkins, and the ball is pushed right in, trying to the 18. Holy Cross are pushing, and we have uh, Felians with seven players right in the back end, and we have Feli Alanda pushing the ball. Nice run. Let's go there by Taylor Smith, where we have some. Felians are still trying to, they're not giving up, but Felians are looking to step inside. Play on, the official says. And we have Jake Warren and Steve DeLong. What do we have here? We have an offside on the play. Don't know what we have on the play. Let's see. Well, right? The ensuing play, though, Gord, uh, the Felians player, Buckingham, uh, he carried the ball probably a little too much. Should have got the shot off. You know, Dixie Dooley, he gave a chance for the Holy Cross defender to recover. Yeah, you're not getting the two tree touch. Not in this game. No. There's got to be one, two, gone. And, exactly. move, and movement, like Tyler Kirby. Tyler Kirby runs miles. Here we have Holy Beautiful hands there for Thomas Pierway. Both goalies have been fantastic. I thought Thomas Pierway has been called upon, and his uh, score sheet reflects what he's put on here today. May have been only four or five good chances. And here we have uh, Tyler Kirby pushing the ball through Holy Cross. And we have Philly. And we have. Uh, telegraphing. Uh, you see, the Philians are telegraphing their, their, their passes. Uh, that time, the ball was dinner for Buckingham, and yet he had a midfielder wide open. You know, making a sure safe pass and getting too ambitious. Danger again. And we have uh, Jake Warren moving in, and, and it's just a side of the net, but it appeared to go off a Philian defender, and again, we have a corner kick coming up for Holy Cross. We are now at the 70 minute, 76 minute mark. And we have a one to nothing score for Holy Cross. Winner advances to the final. The loser plays tomorrow at three o'clock. Who do the winner play, Rick? Either the St. Lawrence Renaissance or the CBS Strikers Football Club coming up at eight o'clock live on broadcast. Right on, folks. So here we have again a corner there and it's been cleared by Felians. We have Devin Ryan and Henderson. Nice run by Devin Ryan. Devin Ryan being cleared. Nice play by cover by Ellie Pretty as well. Pretty to Isaac Bonestiel. Bonestiel to 13. Steve DeLong, Saskatchewan native. Teaches his in Saskatchewan. Plays with Holy Cross. Play with Holy Cross. A number of years back with the Holy Cross this year. The ball's been taken by Bonestiel to Harry Carter to Owen McLeish with a beautiful ball by McLeish. And here we have again Tyler Kirby on this time on the outside left. With a ball going inside. And again, it's just wide off the net by Tyler Kirby. Remember that one, Gord, 78 minute mark. What a great play again at 78 minutes. Tyler Kirby runs miles, guys, and he's done this all season. Done this, and anyone wants to tune into your Twitter account, you can get Ian Shader at, at Soccer in LSA. Back to Rick. Rick, what do you think? 
Well, you go back to that last fight of our Kirby. Like you said, he's been running miles and he's been doing it all season. In the last couple of seasons, a great goal yeah. scorer in his own right. And uh, with 12 minutes to go before a referee's time being added, uh, that could have been a turning point and that crossbar. You get a funny feeling this could be right down to the wire and it looks like so we have a free kick coming up now for the Philians. Very emotional. And we have uh, Philians. Nine players inside are up to the 18-yard line where we have Philians and we have Thomas Pierway inside of the six-yard box or proximity of taking the ball and walking calmly. Hello to my good friend, Annie Walsh. The ball's been taken by the Philians. Turn over to Holy Cross with looking from Steve DeLong to John Hockle. Cleared by uh, Greg Reed. Uh, Greg Reed has been nothing short of a standout there, Ian Chater and Rick Farrell. Yes, as uh, another player, we are mentioning the players of the game, Greg Reed and Matola Kirby in my books. And Fanball Fugel with the goal too. Yes, he played a great first half. Can't forget him. He's been the most important thing here today. He scored on a goal. And they're hard to come by. When you get today's match, folks, the first half, it was all on the field. The second half has been more strategic. There have been more changes on the go with, uh, with the players. And we have good goaltending, superb goaltending in the second half as well. Here we are down to the final 10 minutes, folks. We have uh, Devin Ryan and we have Emmanuel Dodo here. And stay around, folks, for the 8 o'clock game. You have the St. Lawrence Laurentians taking on the CBS, that pro look striker. It's been the first time that the CBS has been into the playoffs in the last 10 seasons or since they came back into the league. I don't think, like, under the format, CBS that would be back back during maybe 70s, 80s, played some Challenge Cup, but they've been out for years. Now they're back, and they're into the playoff. And here we again, we had a player come in there, I'm not sure, it looked like to be uh, Ian Gamba. Ian Gamba has come into the game, number 25 is into the game for the Felians. That's brother of Bobby Gamba. Ian Gamba, 25 for the Felians, is into the cocktail. Not sure, let's see what Felians have done to their defense. They may go and put on a panic button and go for go all out. We have goal coming at the nine minute are still standing. We have Philly pushing the ball out to Ian Gamba and it's been challenged by Alec Pretty with a sliding tackle. Ball goes over the goal line and we have a corner kick coming up for uh, Philians. 81 minutes, one to nothing for Holy Cross. It doesn't get much better than that. For those that are, will be tuning in to Gorkow's live stream, hang in there, myself and Rick will be back for game two of this opening of the Challenge Cup Championship. And we had the ball pushed inside. It looked like the Thomas Pierway was hands up. Couldn't see who cleared the ball. And we have the ball going back to Dylan Jenkins. And Dylan goes downtown Darnie Wyatt softball pitch. Memorial pitch in honor of the former mayor of St. John's retrieving the ball. The ball is put back to Thomas Pierway where we have a goal kick coming up. Again, you are tuning in to Gorecast, live streaming from the King George to Fifth Field here in St. John's, where we have, alongside of me, Rick Farrell. Rick, and don't come much better than No, it's been a great second half, and uh, the Phillians have had a number of great scoring opportunities, uh, but the last play, like you said, was uh, well hit, but uh, 30 feet wide. And uh, you got to get that ball on goal to cause a rebound or some kind of havoc. Okay, we had a Henderson, Sean Henderson, looking to clear the ball. And I'm sure it will be uh, Laurentians from the most southern point in Canada, being it in uh, 
be it all. So much as the Bjorn Peninsula and St. Peter, following the Laurentians all throughout Canada. And we have CBS. That have grown in the sport. And well, we have uh, Cesar Figueroa been taking the ball by Owen McLeish looking to go to Steve DeLong. And again, it's been intercepted by uh, Beauty and Defense here. Who oh, we have, uh, Harry Carter being, hey, tumbled a little. Referee C, play on. As the ball has gone back to over the goal line. And we have uh, Thomas Purely just taking his time. He knows what the clock is, and I guarantee you, he knows that they're leading by a score of one to nothing. On Larsley, thanks for him and a couple of great saves he made in the second half right there. Keep this game in favor of Cross 1-0. Time winding down. With time winding as we're approaching 85 minutes here. Again, uh, one to nothing as we are uh, approaching 85 minutes here. Holy Cross scoring at nine minutes. Goal coming off the boot of Fumba Fabula. Holy Cross, Steve DeLong, and Jake Warren, and John Hockle. What a, what a team of experience there. And here we have Tyler Kirby. Kirby pushing the ball through the six-yard line and a little over the boot of Jake Warren. And we have John Hockle. All the way, Tyler. Well, what, uh, what a formulated play, but look at the veteran experience of uh, John Hockle, Steve DeLong, and Jake Warren. Here we have uh, Harry Carter, and we have Harry Carter battling with Ian Gamba. Gamba just coming in at the approximately the 80 minute mark. The winner of the nice contest will see action on Tuesday, or uh, sorry, on Sunday at uh, 2. And uh, the loser will play in the semifinal tomorrow against the winner of the Laurentians and CBS wishes to follow with an 8 o'clock Newfoundland start. Gord Cass will be there. Newfoundland at soccer in LSA will be there. Rick Farrell will be there and Ian Chater will be there. So hang in folks, don't go away and let's see what the next five minutes or so. We've, we're showing four minutes on the, on the score clock. Yes we are, Gord. There's a uh, slight uh, little uh, wind and uh, some rain uh, drizzle has uh, appeared on the scene again. Here we have Bobby Gamma looking to go to Aaron Buckingham and again uh, Ellie Pretty is very very steady. I don't know if I had to pick the man of the bench I think you'd have a challenge. We could have three different individuals here. And again we have yeah we had a was a, it was a hands on the back by Ian Gamba and the referee there was a great call by the referee uh, that's uh, David uh, Pittman again in the middle. Won't be able to carry the uh, awards. Got to charge, got to do charging off the battery. Got to charge the bodies here as well. <laughs> here we have uh, Dylan Jenkins to Ian Gamba to Billy Alanda with a beautiful ball to outside right to Simon Pope. Pope out to Emmanuel Dolo. Manuel Dolo back to Simon Pope, Pope opening the ball, and it just goes with a deflection over the uh, goal line with a corner kick coming up for uh, Billings, Emmanuel Dolo. This is the late stage of the match, now Gord, and a corner kick could be trouble. We need a very, we have the goalie moving up on the plate. For two minutes left, the goalie is inside of the, uh, Practically inside uh, 18 and 9 yards or so. Ball is gone right through the 18 yard box. And we are down to the final two, folks. We are down to the final two. One to nothing for Holy Cross. 
One to nothing. Goal score for Holy Cross. Bumba Fubula scoring. Goal coming at approximately the nine minute mark. Again alongside of me is Rick Farrell. Rick, we could have a great finish here in the duration of this contest. Well, no doubt, uh, you get a feel of the feeling that we're going to control everybody's hand here at Holy Cross in the waning moments of this match. If we get to be the man I saw, it's not a good We still love you very much because uh, we've had a uh, very quiet game in terms of uh, players going down on the field for various sorts of elements. This time we have Thomas Pierway clearing the ball to the center. And now we have a free shot by a uh, free kick by uh, Stanford. We have a flag on the play here. There was a flag on the play here. The flag was long up on the play. Just a second outside of the match, and both of them have uh, been uh, charged to Holy Cross. Well, we're getting down, folks. Time is of the essence in particular for the Felians. We have a Scotty Woodfine is into the contest as well for the Felians. Two minutes, three minutes. Three. What? Oh! oh what a goal! What a goal! It's Jake Warren off the head of Jake Warren. Two to nothing for Holy Cross. Goal coming at the 90 minute mark. It was assisted by Tyler Kirby. That's all she's going to roast Christmas. Well, well, well. I think that may be where what Holy Cross had looked for throughout the contest. What a beautiful goal by Jake Warren. Yes, the goal, great call on that goal. Uh, he uh, showed up late in the play, read the play beautifully, and hit that ball into the lower corner to give Holy Cross now the crucial 2 0 lead as we get ready to wind down the first blue stopping time. And it looks like Cross is going back to the Challenge Cup final, the Johnson Insurance Challenge Cup final on Sunday afternoon, and the Phillians will have to wait for another day. Here we have John Hockle in center field. Taking the ball to number 10, Tyler Kirby. Kirby against Philly Alanda. And he's... Uh, okay, there was no foul. Just a throw in by the Fabians. Greg Reed to Cesar Figueroa to Emmanuel Dolo. Dolo goes long to Hempy to Dylan Jenkins. And we have Harry Carter. What a beautiful goal. Again, uh, back to Rick. Don't come much better, Ricky. No, uh, you're going to get a lot of credit to Jake Moore that time for being uh, up there. Uh, played the ball beautifully and made no mistake and finished that off to give his team, the Holy Cross Crusaders, a very important 2 0 lead as we wait for the referee now to finally blow the whistle. And uh, as we uh, get ready now uh, before the match, uh, during the week, Gord, I understand uh, that you made some uh, nice predictions and uh, your prediction on this game. My prediction on this game was that uh, Holy Cross would advance, and I based that on the new season, the playoffs. Yes. And you've been around, Rick, oh, and yes. it is a new season. No doubt. And here we have it. The whistle was sounded. Holy Cross has advanced to 2018. Johnson and Jones Challenge Cup Final for this Sunday, September 2nd here in St. John's at King Jewelers in the soccer field. Dean Don, the Phillies, Henry Group, to walk on the field now, go towards the goaltender. They know that tomorrow they have a crucial semi-final match as they await the winner of tonight's game, which will be shown in an hour and a half final on broadcast between the St. Lawrence Legends and the CBS Strider Football Club. So folks should be damned. Yeah. And I will... Uh, I'll be back. I'll be back with a wrap up in a few minutes. And Rick, uh, I don't know what you got there for stats. Maybe the stats will. The second half definitely was much closer than the. Yes. Than the first half, and you, you can uh, give the uh, fans, the audience, uh, 
your take on uh, what you saw, what you witnessed, and uh, here we have Holy Cross uh, off to uh, the 2018 championship. Uh, yes, and we know that uh, Holy Cross has been uh, the Cup champion for the last four years, and now they get a chance to be forward the last five years. So, two to interesting. I'm sorry, Rick. There, uh, it's a two to nothing final here, yes, folks. And so, and so anyway, we'll take a break here, and uh, we'll be back uh, in uh, in two minutes. And uh, final score here today, two to, two to nothing for Holy Cross. Holy Cross now will have advanced to the final. And uh, I don't know, folks. It was just a fantastic game. <laughs> Just a reminder for the fans that we'll be doing the award presentation in five to ten minutes. The award presentation. Okay, well, in five we'll be back. We'll be back in a minute ourselves with a wrap up, and then they'll be back with the. Uh, award presentation but i won't be covering the award presentation for the simple reason we got to get re-energized got to get re got to get refueled got to get uh, some energy into our body got to get our batteries recharged in order for to uh, i can use my mobile unit and uh, and we'll have the award winners on the top of the broadcast for the next game. Hey, yes. all the award winners will be coming up on Gorecast prior to. We'll go on a little early. We'll go on a little early, and Rick will announce all the award winners. And Ian Ch Ian, Ch Ian Chater, the Twitter guy, <laughs> who is tweeting out uh, all of the uh, various. Uh, aspects not only the action it, it is the full coverage full coverage of this Johnson Insurance Challenge Cup action so you can tune in that's again at soccer in LSA that's for the Newfoundland Labrador Soccer Association and uh, Rick will uh, yeah Rick will give a, a full detail of all award uh, winners and uh, I'll see how close they are to my predictions. No problem. And uh, and again, Rick, okay, maybe we'll come on now so we can and take we'll a break. Up, yes. And we'll wrap it up. Rick, uh, take it away. Okay, Gord, uh, once again, the listeners, viewers out there, uh, it was the Holy Cross Crusaders defeating the Philians of St. John by a score of 2 nothing. Goal scorers came at the 9-minute mark by Famba Fudubula at the 9-minute mark, and then Mr. Jake Warren scored at the 90th minute mark to uh, give the cross the 2 nothing win. Thomas Pirouet recorded the shutout. Session in the first half, we figured Holy Cross dominated 70-30. Second half, much different, 50-50. Phil uh, into a couple of good scoring opportunities to uh, get back into the game, but uh, goaltender Pirouet was, was the difference. And as a result, quite simply, Holy Cross ran to the final on Sunday. Phillians live to play another day and they will play tomorrow at 3 p.m. and they'll await the winner of tonight's game coming up in an hour and a half's time, 8 o'clock, between St. Lawrence Laurentians and the CBS Football Club Breakers. Okay, so we do have Holy Cross going to the final. We do have feelings because of their record during the season, finishing in first or second, and they would get a second, a second opportunity. So feelings fall back now to a semifinal group tomorrow at uh, 3 o'clock. And then we have three versus four, which is the Laurentians, uh, third place, uh, playing CBS. What happens with the outcome there, Rick? Tomorrow? No. Today. No, no, today, oh, uh, I, I said, oh, I, I think St. Lawrence is going to win the game, but I think Color Forty and Colton or Douglas are going to be a different game. Yeah, and uh, the winner will advance. And take on the Phillies tomorrow. And, and the loser? goes home. Right on. The season is over and he'll say 2018 it's going to be a good one or we get another life again. It's going to be good. Okay again I thank you all for tuning in to Gorecast live streaming from King, King George V uh, Park where we had uh, Holy Cross Crusaders defeating Finians by a 2 to nothing final. It was uh, uh, Bamba Fabula scoring for uh, 
put across at, uh, the opening goal at the nine minute mark and the second goal of the contest came at 90 minute mark. Yes. It was off the head of Jake Warren and the shot out was recorded by Thomas Fairway. Thank you and we'll be back at approximately uh, 7.45 uh, Newfoundland time. We will do the Aldi Awards presentation as well as we will be uh, do a preview of St. Lawrence playing CBS in the three versus four. Thank you, enjoy your evening and the next game will be live streamed as well. What could you go do right now? Take care.